Hello, everybody. I'm Eric Lee Lewis, the the indie luchador guy who does those things where he talks to those people that make those other things that you might like. And, and today I get to talk to a developer who who made something that I like, and and his name. Well, he's got like a Hollywood movie star name. It seems like he's it, <laughs> he's secretly the brother of Bradley Cooper, which is my favorite actor. So it just turns out really well for him. Uh, my guest today is the creator of Black Ice, Garrett Cooper. Yes, super duper Garrett Cooper. If you're feeling fancy, I just feel like it's so hard to say super duper Gary Cooper. See, I almost said <laughs> Gary Cooper. Well, yeah, I mean there was a Gary Cooper. How about? I call you Stanley Kubrick, and mm. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, what are you doing with Black Ice? What are, you're you're in early access right now? Yes. So uh, the answer to that is I'm just trying a bunch of cool stuff out. Like I early access is kind of crazy. Like all the reflections in the ground, I just put in this week because I was like, hey, the. New version of the Reflections plugin is out. Maybe I'll try that out. And it looks completely different from the way that Reflections were before. And so I'm just like trying it out and seeing if people like it. If they don't, I can put it back. See, I met you at PAX East. I, I don't think you realize. Yeah. That. Uh, OK. It, I was going to say, you, you, your Skype picture looks familiar. So. Yeah, I, uh, I I met you at PAX East. I was like, you know what? I'm, er I'm, I'm really interested in Black Ice. I, just, I had just come off of uh, religiously playing Heavy Bullets and was looking for something kind of in that vein still and uh, got stuck with Fancy Skulls next. And then I was like, all right, need Black Ice. <laughs> those are great games. Those are, I mean, those are proper roguelikes. It, it needs to happen, though. Like, there, there needs to be more of that. And especially really good games, especially mechanically speaking and everything. I, I, I kept on telling myself, okay, you got to get Black Ice. Like, I especially like the logo. It's my favorite pin that I got from Paxis because uh, being somebody that was, you know, actually manning a booth there, it was like you get those bags. Remember, I don't, well, I, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You go up to uh, the Cards Against Humanity booth and they're like, oh, you're a developer? Okay, well, here's your bag of pins for all the developers and basically yours is in there already and you didn't have to pay for it. And it's like, oh, cool. And then I was like, holy shit, this black ice pin. This thing is awesome. <laughs> Oh man, so you got one of the little little black and white ones, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I, have, I have one of the developer bags because I was working with a, another team at the time that I am no longer with. I was at okay. the, I was with Move or Die. Okay, yeah, I like that game. I, I, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But yeah, uh, did you get, oh man. <coughs> so what you're saying is if you got that, if you got that pin, is yeah. that the only one you got? Because we had like like metallic ones in the booth too. Th that is the only like, one I got. Here, let me. Uh, oh man, and I have holog hologram pens now too. You hear that? That's yeah. my that's my bag of shitloads of pens from uh, everything, and I can actually specifically find the black ice one right here. And yes, it's the black and white one. <laughs> it's okay. the it's the one that stands out most to me. It's it's the coolest fucking pin of all of them. Thank you. Yeah, well, I had an artist uh, by the name of uh, Metkiss do that particular logo. Yeah, and I'm I'm really happy about that. He's gonna be redoing the main menu with all sorts of cool new UI stuff soon too. What kind of music does he listen to? Because uh, your logo almost looks like a logo for a band called The Chariot. That's an excellent question. I actually don't know what kind of music he listens to, but um, hmm. I don't know, most people say it looks like the Punisher logo, which, you know, I get that. I like the Punisher, but I mean, skulls are pretty common. That is, that is true. I think I have a skull laying around here, so... Oh, wait. Oh, it's it's in my, it's in my head. Uh, I was going to make the joke, but you beat me to it. It's tragic. It, was... <laughs> uh, it, it looks like uh, a mixture of the Punisher skull, yes, mixed with the Chariot skull, and it's just like... I wonder if Garrett made this himself, and if he is a Chariot fan, but... <laughs> now that I, well, I mean, like I approved it, I helped make it a little bit better. But you know, I like that it that it kind of looks like it's got circuits going with it. You know, I just want to imagine that you're a chariot fan. <laughs> but something tells me I'm gonna have to Google them. I don't know them yet, but I, I will. I, I maybe maybe you shouldn't. They're pretty chaotic. I don't think you're gonna. Depending on what you listen to, I don't I don't think the chariot's for you. The chariot's not for about ninety percent of the world. <laughs> They're just kind of for me. I don't know. They're, they're they're the band that I love. So, anyways, uh, you're still in early access. Yes. 
And I've been on Steam Early Access for a little over a year now, just, you know, continuing to make the game better. Um, most recently, I set it up so, well, A, so those reflections are all colorful like that. But then I also, um, I have infinite levels in multiplayer now. So any player can go in any direction and just keep spawning things and it works fine. That's sexy. I, I do like the idea of that. I mean, as a guy who's not particularly into multiplayer most of the time, I, there's something exciting about the, the prospect of uh, multiplayer and just going on separate ways and being able to spawn in enemies in cool, creative ways. <laughs> you seem to be doing something really right with that, and I, I feel like I should tell you thank you for... You know, not just shoveling it into there. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, it was it was actually pretty pretty technically difficult to get that working. I had to figure out a bunch of stuff. Um, it took me a while, so you know, I like to do a patch every week, um, which is pretty crazy. But I mean, I I think it keeps people feeling like you know I'm not abandoning the game, <laughs> which is something that people will you know claim on other games sometimes. I don't like that. Mm. But uh, yeah, so. I, uh, I just, I, I didn't get to do a patch last week, but this week I did, and it, it's come, it's gone pretty well. So what I'm wondering is when you're actually planning on doing a full release, though. Like, oh man, I mean, you're not asking for like a specific date, right? I, like, I mean, I'm, you I'm seem trying. to be a perfectionist, <laughs> it, and, and and like, as uh, okay, so. There's there's a couple of game developers that I talk to all the time. Like I have a set group of developers I talk to almost every day of my life. Dennis okay. Whedon, Edmund McMillan, okay, Phil Fish, and the guys are all perfectionists. They're like, I'm afraid to put this out because what well, what if this breaks? I don't know whose voice that was. I guess it sounds more like Phil than anybody, but <laughs> like those yeah. are those are the people I talk to on you know. A pretty regular basis, and every one of them seem to be afraid to release things until it's essentially perfect. And and you seem to be sure. somebody that is looking to put out a perfect game in any way that they possibly can. Which, don't get me wrong, definitely a good thing. But at the same time, aren't you going to burn yourself out? Well, I mean, the thing is, like, so I've still got a day job, right? Um, so I'm not working on this 24 seven. And you know, when I'm at work and I have a good idea, I'm like, oh, all right, well, I should put that in. I've got like a big public list of ideas. And so players can go and like vote on which ideas they like, put comments on there and even suggest their own. Um, so yeah, I've got that thing. And so I'm, well, I am constantly thinking about the game, but I don't get to constantly work on it. So it's hard for me to burn myself out. Okay, that's that's fair. I, I, I think that most of the time, people are like, oh yeah, I quit my job to, to work on this game full-time. Well, how are you doing? I'm losing my house. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> I Have you been approached by publishers, though, at all? Like, you don't, oh, have to, yeah. you don't have to say specifics or anything like that, but... Oh, yeah, just lots of little publishers um, saying, like, hey, you should totally, like, look into us and give us, you know, whatever percentage of <laughs> your profits. Yeah, that's... Oh, God, okay, so... I, I was afraid that you were going to, you seem like such a nice guy, and I was afraid you were going to be like, whoa, this guy's crazy. Uh, God, he says some horrible shit on Twitter. I am afraid to do this interview all of a sudden. I mean, everybody says crazy shit on Twitter sometimes, right? Yeah, um, but I'm kind of, I, I'm at this point in time right now where I'm getting really close to launching my own public relations firm. Cool. And basically the idea behind it is, Hey, this is the first public relations and marketing firm for independent game developers that doesn't screw them over. That doesn't take huge profits. Basically, the idea is you, you take a very tiny percentage, enough to keep the company running, enough to help other publishers out, or other developers out, and basically cut the bullshit of, hey, we want 25% of your profits, and uh, also... Uh, later on, we want we want thirty percent of your profits. Like, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I depending on 
Yeah, depending on what they actually give you in return, I suppose it could be good. But like a lot of them are talking about how they'll get you on Steam, and it's like, well, I already got on Steam. You can already do that on your own. Yeah, it's you know not as hard as it used to be. So I don't know. Just tweeting about my game really isn't the. No, it's, it's not going to do it for me. <laughs> so that's why I don't have a publisher right now. Yeah, I I, I get these. Uh, I went on a little rant yesterday about it um, on my stream, and. Let's Left click to shop, by the way. It looks it, like you're, you're trying to it's shop. It's not letting me. No? no? Oh, maybe I broke that. That's odd. All right. Well, that's an interesting one. Oh, there you go. I found a bug for you. Cool. I'll, I'll check it out another yeah, shop to make sure. Anywhere you have that cursor, it should let you open it. But uh, let me write that down. Yeah, it's not just that one. Well, it's on my bug fix list now, so awesome. we'll be fixing it in, uh, within a week or so. That's a pretty big bug. Actually, you know what? That's probably a really tiny bug that that just it's just some stupid little thing. And like I said, I just redid all of the code that um, determines how the buildings talk to their network copies, which can mess up single player as well. Um, and that that includes jobs. But, you know, there's nothing you can get in a shop that you can't get just from hacking. Well, I'm in the state going here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the further away from the center, the harder it gets. Did anyways. No, 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 I'm still here. Okay. I was letting you guys do your thing. <laughs> Um, anyways, as I was saying, like or, uh, about the uh, the publishers and everything, I, I think that the biggest problem is a lot of them send out what are some of the worst emails I've ever received. I, I, I worked in press. I was a reviewer. I was one of the assholes who had to find everything bad about your game and only talk about the bad about your game. Mm -hmm. So I, I came from that, and I still get press emails, and I get them from, you know, the, the I would say three of the most prominent PR uh, firms for independent developers and they're the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> I, I can't hey the game's coming uh, you should check it out note to editors and it's just like dude why why just note to editors I don't need I don't need this what I need is you to tell me what's so special about this game I need you to spell out what's so good about the game <laughs> I need you to make sure that you're contacting the right public or the, the right uh, uh, the right reviewers the, the right people to get this out the right publications you know you don't reach for just the small guys get your shit out to IGN and make your shit look good like mm -hmm. Don't give me the same shit every time that says, well, this game does this, and uh, that's that's our three sentences on it. You should play it and uh, put this out. Release it to the public. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, at least if they're only sending you three sentences, it's not too bad. I mean, okay, so do you want to hear the elevator pitch for Black Ice? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the elevator pitch for Black Ice is... If you ever wanted to uh, jetpack around cyberspace uh, shooting spiders in the face with lasers, yes. then, then yeah, Black Ice is for you. And the game, it's not a subtle game. It's about, you know, blowing everything up. First person shooter, action RPG elements. And uh, I think it's a lot of fun. What, what makes yours so different than everybody else's? Well, nobody else has a game like this. You joking? Like, I mean, sure, <laughs> some people have like Tron sort of look to the game, which we have here, and there are some first person shooters out there. But, you know, unless you're talking about Borderlands, there aren't really any games that have a first person shooter stuff with RPG elements. And really, this is Diablo style loot. It's not Borderlands style loot where, you know, the guns are different, but, you know, you can't do anything super crazy. Like, all the items are abilities, you know? So you can do some really ridiculous stuff in this game. Like, you can get, like I said, a rocket shotgun and go, you know, rocket jumping around. Um, there's a whole perk system, which I, I don't even know if uh, if you guys have seen. Um, that was added also fairly recently in August. Um, if you go to your talents and then hit the perks tab at the top, you can see those. And there's some like crazy stuff like that. That really enables you to specialize and do some more interesting things. Like, um, 
There's one that makes it to where you can shoot five disc weapons at once. And there's one that makes it to where your aimbot minions will just shoot whatever it is in your left click slot, even if it's really overpowered. Uh, and there's one that just makes all of your projectiles drunk. Mm. Yeah, drunk. Well, you've never been drunk before? Oh. <laughs> it's called I mean, it's drunk. called projectile vomiting. And when you <laughs> God, please, uh, please tell me that's what that's called because I've never seen that perk. It, it's called uh, Drunken Master, actually. Okay, that works. That works. Yeah, you know, old Jackie Chan reference. But uh, yeah, so it um, that one's particularly fun if you have a whole lot of attack speed and you're using a shotgun and watching all of your projectiles just whoosh everywhere. Um, oh God, I think I have a GIF of that. Let me find it. Um, it gets it gets real silly. Do you have ADHD, sir? <laughs> yes. No, I just like GIFs. Oh, okay. I no, I have ADHD really bad, and and it sounds like you think like I do. So I was like, oh man, this is awesome. I was I was excited for a second. I just I really like awesome things. Let's see. <laughs> uh, like I said, the game doesn't have a whole lot of stuff <laughs> to it. I mean, there's. There's a disco ball that shoots lasers everywhere. Like, do you want to do you want to see that? Because we can totally cheat to bring that in. Um, okay. There are cheat codes. It'll mark your character as a cheater, um, which um, not yet, but eventually you'll be able to mark a multiplayer game for cheaters or you no know, cheaters, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so the cheat code, if you just press enter to open the chat box and type in in all caps, B-I underscore disco death ball. Let me, uh, let me uh, finish this uh, hack and I'll do that. No, you will do it now. It's. it's <laughs> um, I like this guy. Okay. I, I think you should keep on yelling at him. It, it'll make me incredibly happy. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean? What do, what do you mean? Come on. <laughs> I did not post that GIF yet. I, I think the. Uh, the fact that you have a dodge or dodgeball, damn it, a disco ball that uh, there is a dodgeball as well, by the way. Uh, <laughs> if you like dodgeballs, well, I mean, how could you not? It was the best day of, of gym class every time. <laughs> and you guys played di disco dodgeball, by the way. I did. It's it's really good. It's bi underscore disco death ball, uh, disco death ball, and then there's also bi underscore disco dodgeball. That one works too. Um, and gonna put this GIF on the internet. Not that, not that. I lost it, there it is. Okay. This is gonna be incredibly weird on the uh, archives. Okay. <laughs> can I can I link this by the way? Yeah, the absolutely. Path? You can okay. you can do anything you want. I have no rules for my my chat on on Twitch at all. I think no. it's. I, I, okay. I don't. I don't believe in the rules. I don't. I don't believe in the, the kind of things that other streamers do. I just. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, I'm not a big fan of a lot of other streamers. There's like maybe altogether about 20 that I've ever seen that I've actually liked. Wow. Okay. Well, if you have no rules, then chat. Listen to me closely. Yes. Go buy Black Ice. Yes. <laughs> it's only fifteen dollars. It will be twenty later. So, you know. All right, here's the gif of uh, a snowball shotgun with uh, the drunk affix on it and a lot of attack speed and attack range. Uh, did the dodgeball? Oh, it didn't work, okay. Uh, I must have broken that cheat. Well, when you break a cheat code, it doesn't matter too much, does it? Yeah, that's just like the, you know. I, I mean, it might. Uh, back in the day, back before there were achievements and everything and like, Cheats were so prevalent. Uh, I don't know. If you broke my Grand Theft Auto cheats, I, I probably would have cried hysterically, <laughs> like a like a like a little girl. I would have been <laughs> weeping. But yeah, there's there's all sorts of cheats in the game, but again, it does mark you as a cheater. And for this character, you won't be able to get achievements anymore, um, which I think is fine. I don't know. I got an achievement for enabling the cheat. Uh that's interesting. You shouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, I got the unique um, achievement. Hmm. So it may have given you that achievement before it actually marked you as a cheater. I don't know. That that's not a hard achievement to get. I'm not super worried about that. Um, 
So yeah, also, please note, all the cheats give you level one items, um, which all of the unique items in the game do scale with level. All the items scale with level. Um, so, you know, it might not be doing super great damage since you're level five and hacking something that looks like it's at least around that level. Uh, I accidentally disabled the HUD and I have no clue how I did that. F1. F1. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep, just like Minecraft. Let's so, Garrett, see. so Garrett, tell me about yourself. Tell, uh, tell me, tell me about your past. How you got into games development? Okay. Sorry, we're well, we're like so off topic right now. I'm just. Wow. I gotta drag us back in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I got started in game development. Okay, I, I had, uh, I lost my day job. There were big layoffs, and then I had to move out to California. And uh, so I get out there, and none of my friends are anywhere near us. And I finished reading Game of Thrones, and I was like. Okay, what do I do with my life now? Because there's this huge void after reading those books that take up so much of your time. Uh, and so my friend was like, hey, you should try out Unity. And I'm like, cool, I kind of know how to code from work and whatnot. So yeah, let's do it. And this is what happened. I I started with like a puzzle and you know, like a little 15 tile sliding puzzle. And you can actually see that in it's the spawn platform in the game. You can still solve that puzzle. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's, and I just built up from there. It was just like, hey, cool, first person character controller, nice. And then I built on top of that and I started, you know, I did this aesthetic because it's what I could do by myself and yeah. So, so have you always wanted to be a game developer though? That, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Yes, like to some extent. Okay. So, you know, I like, I didn't go into it for my job because I, I didn't think I'd be able to hold a solid job down because I mean you know the game development industry has terrible layoff rates and whatnot um, and so you know when I was in you know calculus class everybody had graphing calculators and everybody else had TI-83s but I had a TI-86 so I couldn't run the same games that they could so I had to print out the code for the games and paste it and like punch it in by hand onto my calculator <laughs> um, and so that's kind of how I learned to code <laughs> oh god yeah, it was kind of ridiculous. Um, and, you know, I'm, they, I was taught, like, actually how to code in college. See, we got really bored in class when we figured out that the uh, calculators we had had Snake or Mario secretly right. built into them from other people putting them on there previously. So yeah. we'd all be sitting there playing Snake, which, I mean, if, if anybody knows about Snake, it's obviously the greatest game of all time. It's <laughs> probably not true. I would actually but, say, yeah. I love that game. Snake? Ah. No, no, that's called Metal Gear Solid is what you're thinking of. That's oh. that's snake <laughs> you, If you're going to snake, you got to snake right. But I, I I never, never, okay, I always followed video games. I never knew that I wanted to do something in the games industry until I decided, you know what? College is not getting me anywhere near where I want to be. So I basically stopped going to college and said, hey, I got this idea. I'm going to do whatever I can to be in the games industry. The games industry has always been something I've been fascinated with. I understand the ins and outs of it because, well, I'm a horrible fucking uber nerd. I, I, I should probably just get into this and, and dedicate my time to it. So that, that was basically my way into it. So I, I was just like... I don't know, there's some people who immediately know how to make games. It just seems like it's built into them somehow. <laughs> so it seemed like, I don't know, you're talking about like hacking in this game. Like this game is about hacking things. Of course not, obviously not like really hacking in real life, but it seems <laughs> nobody, like you might have been would... into this whole thing as a child. Oh yeah, I mean like, have you ever read Neuromancer or Snow Crash or watched Ghost in the Shell, that sort of thing? You would think I had, but no. No. no? Wow, okay. Well, let me just suggest all three of those things right off the bat there. There's all sorts of other cool cyberpunk stuff you can do. But, um, yeah, so in Neuromancer, they described hacking as, you know, you're just in this space where, you know, there's all these corporate servers and they're represented by large geometrical objects. And then you just go up and touch them to start a hack. And then you have to deal with what they throw at you. And that's where I started from. <laughs> nice. Um, so, when you finish this, are you already thinking about the next project? 
Oh man. Well, I mean, of course, when you make games, you start thinking about like, oh man, I could do this, and then I could totally like make this other type of game. And on top of that, like anytime you find out like some new tool, you're just like, I could make an entire game out of this. So yeah, I've, I've thought about all sorts of other projects, but for one, I, I think I'll probably, as long as people are buying it and excited about the game, I'll probably be putting more into Black Ice because, you know, there's so many different crazy things you can do because it's, you know, it's cyberspace. It's people going in and hacking their own things into everything. Like, none of it has to make any sense. That's why there's a gun that shoots rainbows and there's the, the disco dodgeball, right? <laughs> like, so I can add almost whatever I want to this game. Like, I'd love to do melee weapons, but I probably won't do that before, you know, full release because that's a, it's a nice to have. It's not a mandatory, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so this is a game you want to keep on supporting as, as like time goes along. You don't want to just stop this project. Is what yeah, I'd doing. like to, but you know, at the same time, if people aren't buying it anymore, then you know, maybe it won't be worth the time. That that's something I can understand being afraid of in a way. Like, what if all of a sudden people don't care about it anymore and they want to move on to the next thing? Like, that's always one of the biggest issues. Yes. Well, I mean. How do you know when the right time is to start working on the next project? <laughs> That's an excellent question. This being my first commercial project, um, I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that. Uh, but I would say, you know, when you just you don't have that many really passionate players, you know, any more excited about the game, that, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so to answer a couple questions in chat real quick, um, throwing weapons are considered melee weapons. No, I, I disagree. That's completely, I mean, it depends on what kind of game you're playing, but I, I disagree with that. Um, black ice, ice stands for intrusion countermeasure electronics and black ice is the kind of ice that'll kill you. So all of the enemies in the game are black ice. Nice. Okay. That's, that's fucking smart. I, I like the idea of that. <laughs> so that, that's actually from Neuromancer and a lot of other cyberpunk too. Um, but yeah. But for the next thing, you know, I'll probably do something that I can at least, you know, use a lot of the code from Black Ice in order to make another game. You know, like maybe I'll make an arena shooter based on Black Ice, that sort of thing. Um, you know, like a actual PvP sort of game. Like there is PvP in the game, but the focus is on, you know, leveling up and being a badass and getting stronger. Like, and that doesn't correlate very well. It doesn't mesh well with PvP because you got to make that balanced. So I said, eh, you know, I'll let people PvP if they want to, but, you know, mostly I'm going to focus on making things awesome. Wait, wait, wait. You you just want to make a really good game. Right. God, can you can you do me a favor? <laughs> can you tell a lot of the uh, newer game developers out there to try to follow that? I, everybody wants to make a really good game. I mean, it's just a lot of people get really ambitious and try to make two games at once. Like if I was if I was trying to balance it for PvP and single player, that would really be making two games at once. Mm. And that's ridiculous. So yeah, I'm already basically making two games at once because I'm doing multiplayer. It's, it seems like, okay, so there was a, uh, a booth that was decently close to our booth at, at uh, PAX East and I went over there and I was like, oh man, you guys don't seem excited about being here. And they're, they're like, well, yeah, we just, you know, we have our game here and and we didn't really want to be here. And I was like, why? Why would you not want to be here? What? Well, we <laughs> just makes sense. We just made a, an indie game to prove that anybody can make an indie game and, and they're all shitty. And I was like, <laughs> OK, that's that's, wow. that's that's a way to think about it, I guess. If you're an Jeez. asshole. Yeah. Do, do something you enjoy, come on, like... If it makes you feel better, I'm pretty positive that that might have been the worst game on the floor. It was... it was bad. It was it was really bad. Like, the, the reviewer part of me kind of kicked in a little bit, and I was like, what... what are you? I just couldn't understand it anymore, I guess. I, I, I don't understand why... why people do such stupid shit just to uh basically be assholes but as i said they were they they weren't even talking to anybody there were no developers interested in talking to them they, they just kind of alienated themselves it was it was really fucking strange which at pax east 
is incredibly fucking strange considering all the developers start working together to help each other with whatever you know you got you got alex from robot loves kitty and she's bringing cookies around everybody while they're setting oh, yeah. up and i i just don't understand the mindset of oh well uh we've made this game and uh we we did it because you know anybody can make an indie and I mean, is it was it somebody who was trying to show off a tool or something like that? No, 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 no. They were showing off. Uh, I guess, I guess, to not completely call them out, a pirate game, indie game. Okay. It was. It was. Well, we don't need to talk about. I. I, I don't like to denigrate anyone else's work. Um, I do. Oh, we God. can talk shit about my game if you want. I mean, I'm still working on it. <laughs> It's okay. None of these words are coming out of your mouth. It's me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not afraid. So, so basically, when it comes down to Black Ice, I, I think that what you have here is an amazing game. I, I think that you're you're going to keep on working on it and, and supporting it. But what if what if all of a sudden that just dies off? Like, what if that dies off and then eventually maybe there's a little bit of a comeback for it? I, I think that it's one of those games that could potentially have that kind of appeal to people. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm kind of trying to set it up like, um, you know, the early access setup is kind of like Minecraft, where, you know, it's cheap, but as, I, like, it started at $5, and it's up to 15 because I've continually added features. Um, so as I do big patches, I'll raise the price a little bit each time. And I want people to play, and then, you know, maybe they get a little bored, and then they're just like, oh, cool, new patch, what's all this cool stuff I can play with? And then they come back, and maybe they talk about it. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and that's how I played, you know, like Diablo 2. Mm -hmm. You know, I, every... I played the shit out of that game, so I understand. Yeah, and and a lot of the item interactions and stats and whatnot, that was all Diablo 2, very Diablo 2 inspired. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, um, I think what got me into it was when you were talking about it being uh, very inspired by Borderlands, because I'm a huge, huge, huge Borderlands nerd. I mean... <laughs> Massive, and and I liked Diablo too. I was, you know, I played it for I would say a good two, two and a half years straight, just yeah. doing the same shit over and over again. <laughs> One second, I gotta turn off my notifications on my phone because it turns out some people on the internet are assholes. <laughs> hey, I see you're streaming right now. How's it going? Hey, there's a real rainbow gun. You're you're streaming right now and doing an interview, and you've been only trying to talk about doing this interview for a couple of weeks now. Uh, <laughs> man, we should really bother you. That's a that's a great time. <laughs> I, I just don't understand people. I guess the the internet, everybody, the internet. <laughs> All right. So so. so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was gonna say I can talk about like what I'm working on next, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I would love that. I, I'm sorry, I'm just so scattered all over the place right now. I, <laughs> I'm dealing with like notifications. Everybody's just ah. I, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Well, um, so I started doing this like YouTube setup where you know I'll just do like a five minute video every week that just tells people like what I've been working on. So even if they're not playing the game, they can watch the video and be like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's what. That's what's coming next. Like that's how it's shaping up. Um, so what I've been working on is um, changing up the terrain a little bit because if you notice right now everything's flat, um, which I, I saw is great the, for those. I, I saw that uh, the images, and I'm excited for that. <laughs> awesome! I'm I'm glad you're excited. Yeah. So I mean, even even simple things like just putting the finality on a hill, like that's. And, and of course, you know, it's cyberspace hill, so it looks like a pyramid with the top cut off. And it's angular, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> um, the idea being that, you know, if there's more geometry in the world, you can use it to your advantage. Like maybe you can use it something as a choke point, or maybe you can get the high ground and so that it's easier to aim your rockets, that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going for with that. And it's not super simple unfortunately to get that working on account of you know i have to make sure that the buildings don't clip through the ground and i have to make sure that the enemies know how to climb up things um which they'll climb up the buildings just fine especially if you're on top of the buildings but um you know they're not great at the terrain they didn't know like they're like what is this i'm running into this wall repeatedly what's going on because they just they don't know yet so um 
Yeah, so that's going to be difficult. Like I said, I'm, I'm completely redoing the UI. Um, in particular, paying attention to, um, like, the game's got controller support and everything. I tried it out on a Steam controller, which is really cool. Um, it works fine. Um, but I am trying to make it look good on big picture if it's in really high resolution. Like, it'll look great in 1080p, but it can be a little hard to read if you're far back on a couch, that sort of thing. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, and just, like, just more random stuff to find when you're out here in cyberspace, like more types of buildings and maybe, like, an idea for, like, a lockdown server that would be more difficult in that um, it would be a you know, win or die building, because you are stuck within the hack radius. You cannot leave. Um, so that could be fun, I think. Um, and, you know, give people a better chance of getting good loot if they actually do manage to hack a building like that. Um, or just weird things in the world. Like, what if I had... You know, like in racing games where you go through, like, a little booster spot and it makes yeah. you go faster? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, something like that. Maybe it's, like, a ring or just something on the ground and like, yeah, it gives you a movement speed boost if you go over it, but it'll also give an enemy a movement speed boost. So if you're not paying attention and the enemy spawns on the other side of one of those, he's gonna charge you real quick and you're gonna have trouble with that. So that's what it is. So what was your main inspiration behind the visual style? Was this something that just made it easier for the game to run better or was this a, uh, yo, I'm a Tron nerd and fuck a <laughs> Tron? Uh, well, I do like Tron, but a lot of this was, you know, when you're, when you're building a game by yourself, or in my case, you know, mostly by myself, and I have some some people that I've hired to help with a couple little things here and there, um, you have to work around your weaknesses. And I am not much of an artist, but I like colors. I think I have a decent eye for color, and so I was like, I can do that and I can make a bunch of things with particles and whatnot. Um, so yeah, oh man, you're so dead. Look at this. So there's all those enemies there. Two of them have slowing. Just, yeah, they got you. All right. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I'm working around my weakness here. By the way, there's a dark server right there. See that spot? You should try that one. It'll be fun. I promise no ill will come of this. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I forgot I'm, I'm behind you on this. But yeah, dark servers, you know, can't see what level they are, can't see the enemies, can't see the uh, border, because they're all cloaked. Of course, they reveal themselves and they attack, but, you know. Um, and your minions aren't fooled by the cloak, so that's nice. Um, let's see. But yeah, so, like I said, mostly because, I, you know, I really love LEDs and lights and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of why I went with this, and also just because it was simple enough that I could do it. That's, hey, that's a hell of an explanation. I tried to make a game once. I can't figure out shit. So <laughs> I'm well, I mean, not as far as you did with it. <laughs> there are tools that even if you don't know how to code, you can totally make games. Like, I mean, even if if Game Maker's too much for you, which you don't need to code to do that, like, and they've, Game Maker's had some really awesome games like Hotline Miami and whatnot in it, but, you know, you can do stuff like Twine and tell a narrative, um, or do simple, like, you can do simple, like, text-based RPGs in Twine, too. Um, you know, any anybody can make a game. It's not... It's just a matter of starting small enough that you can actually finish it and then build up after that. Okay, so something caught my eye the other night. I think it was actually last night. Yeah, it was last night. Something caught my eye. You'd never seen Rambo before. No, okay. So I have seen... <laughs> which, let me... Wait, before we get to that, let me answer a couple of questions in chat because I think we've fallen behind here. Okay. Um, are there any Easter eggs? Yes, there's a ton of Easter eggs. If you solve the puzzle at the start, there's one Easter egg there. Um, all of them, half the names in the game are puns. Um, some of the building incorporations are references to early backers in the game, that sort of thing. Um, will there be any Levolution stuff? I don't know what that is. Yeah, like, like say there are too many... No, no, Battlefield. What, um, what did they... Making a, a building fall or, or something. Oh, no, that's not really, that's, um, that's out of my scope. I don't think I can manage to do that. Um, although I have, and I don't know if I'll ever get to this, but one of my ideas was you hack a building and it's not really a building. It's a giant enemy. That's like a transformer. <laughs> I, 
please do that. Please. I know, right? Like, oh, my oh God. it would be so much fun. But um, the problem with that is, like, you get this giant enemy, and then where's he going to walk? Like, he can't go around corners and stuff. He doesn't have to like, walk. Fuck it. Have him be projectile-based. Yeah, I guess that could work. Implant uh, himself into the ground, become a giant turret. Yeah, okay. That seems like he'd be easy to kill. But I guess if he had, like, weak points on his back and he turns slowly, yeah, that's that's doable. I, I mean, I don't know. think about it from the, the, the perspective of, of Borderlands. Every now and then you open a chest and it's a loot midget chest. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Jenkins just fucks your shit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's possible. Um... I yeah I'm not I'm not a huge fan of games with like a lot of boss mechanics. There is one boss in Black Ice, but I'm not like I don't know. I, I will be doing probably more boss stuff, but it's not like my focus. I'd rather do something that like there's just more types of regular enemies for you to fight, you know? Because it takes almost the same amount of effort. Um, oh man. Okay, so this puzzle will take a long time for you to solve, especially if you don't know binary, um, and you're solving it upside down. Uh, let's see. That's okay. Um, yeah, there's no way to tell whether it's upside down. The, the starting, the, where the gap is at the start needs to be the same place at the end. So it is possible to solve this upside down and, and don't oh, do that. Okay. Uh, let's see, how about a boss that make them drop a little buff? Um, I. So when you say like a buff, like do you mean like a permanent bonus? Because like there's the whole talent system that gives that already. Um, there are there's a health power up. I do want to do other types of power ups, but I haven't um, haven't felt the need for that right now. Right now, I've been trying to make the game more difficult. Um, which, if you hack a server that's too far above your level, it gets very difficult. Um, but more like strategic elements is what I'm going for. Um, let's see. Uh, there is no border to the level. The terrain is endless. Um, even if you don't have infinite city size turned on, you can walk forever and we'll just spawn more tiles for you to walk on. Okay, so back to Rambo. No, I had never, like, seen all of Rambo. I had seen, and I swear to God, I thought it was Rambo 1, the part where he's he's been shot through the side and he goes and takes, like, a hot coal and, like, cauterizes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Was that Rambo 3? It had to be Rambo 3. I believe it is the third one, yes. Okay, because I watched Rambo 1 and 2 yesterday trying to find that scene. Uh, I had not seen either of those movies. And... They were... The first one was great. It was surprisingly good. Yeah. I, I didn't think a movie about killing cops would be super popular, you know, in the 80s, but that one was, and uh, yeah, it was good. Um, Turns and, out not just a dumb action movie, it actually yeah. has like a fucking story that's like, yo, PTSD, that's a mm -hmm. thing. It'll fuck you up pretty bad. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I haven't seen, I, ha I saw the second one, it was not nearly as good. No. Um, it was fun. Yeah, it's it's fun. I, I'm and I'm totally in a dumb fun action movie. So, like anybody who knows me knows that I'm like the biggest Arnold fan ever. So I, I, oh, love, I love Arnold movies. Oh, God. Okay, what's your favorite one? I need to know. Oh man. Okay, so the one that immediately comes to mind as like one that not many people know about, but is is an excellent movie. Okay, so my real favorite, probably Total Recall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I also just watched recently. Um, but The Sixth Day is a great movie, I think. Um, did you like that one? I, I did like The Sixth Day, but I mean, I, I, I like the real unsung hero of Arnold movies. Is that the like, one where he gets on the roller coaster at the end of the movie? What? Are you, You're thinking of Last Action Hero? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> that was another crazy Arnold movie. I haven't seen that one in a long time. Uh, yeah, uh, so, no, I mean, there's, there's a ton of good movies. The unsung hero of it all, though. Raw That's, Deal. Raw Deal. Raw Deal. Dude, I haven't seen that one. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, you need to watch it. Is it on Netflix? Like, I don't know. Uh, one way or the other, you you need to you need to watch Raw Deal. You can buy it at stores usually for five dollars, packed in with another movie, like uh, like uh, Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive, which I'm not a fan of any Stephen King movies really, but Maximum Overdrive is packed in with that. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I it's, Raw Deal, Raw. Just, I, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I want you to be amazed with what you're seeing. Awesome. I'm excited about that.
And I wonder if my wife has seen that. She's seen a lot of horror movies too. By the way, the chat was wondering if there's enemies with power-ups in them. Yes, like that one right there would have set you on fire. That one's got a shield that makes everything around them stronger. There was one that slows you down. There are ones that drop mines. There were some that spit acid, but I had to take them out because too many noobs were dying. Because they didn't move. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> it was it was too much. Um, yeah, so um yeah, Ghost in the Shellfish, that's an Easter egg. Uh, that's the name of the, the crab enemies there. All of the enemies have pun names. In fact, I try to put as many puns into the game as possible because I'm a terrible person. Um, no, hey? that's not how that works. You're, you're not a terrible person for putting puns in it. <laughs> that makes you a better person. Yep. No, oh, I agree. Uh, yeah, so somebody was asking about a reforge mechanic to make like a, a different type of weapon like that. I mean, there's... The weapons already have like a ton of variety to them. When I do like... There's something like, I don't know, 30 base types of items in the game, and then there are unique versions of each of those that are different, some of which there's like multiple types of uniques. So like you have a regular las gun right there, there's a unique one that will set enemies on fire when you use it, and another unique one that will like slow enemies down significantly when you hit them with it, which really helps with kiting. So yeah, there's, there's all sorts of different types of unique items. And you know, the Disco Death Ball, that's a unique item in the game that it's rare but it's really fun and you know there's minions there's you can actually get a cat minion to follow you around and he licks his paws to attack people um, that is that is the most rare item in the game because it is the most silly item in the game i will be it's, finding that's that pretty out. damn good it's... my wife really really wanted me to put that in so i did it for valentine's day for her <laughs> um there are items that only drop during certain times of year there um there are hacko lanterns that you get during halloween Hacko lanterns? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably gonna be running a pumpkin carving contest, by the way, which the reward for that, if you win, will probably be a um, uh, like a t-shirt and a copy of the game, that sort of thing. Um, I will be entering that then. <laughs> I'll be whooping that ass. Is what's gonna be happening? I'll take you. I'll take you on the pumpkin carving contest. You ain't got shit. I can carve a pumpkin like nobody's business. <laughs> I love the competition here. Mine is, <laughs> mine is going to be Nicki Minaj's ass with a rift or, or, or with a uh, um, a black ice uh, logo on it. Yeah, well, I'm wow, starting okay. tomorrow. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've already done it in my head. So therefore, the pumpkin gonna seeds. Eat. I'm going to eat pumpkin seeds, and and I'm going to be like, yeah. Watch me, watch me win, and Joker can suck it now. Me metaphorical sucking, by the way. Not, oh. not like, not like a, you know. Well, I thought things were to get interesting, but apparently not. So, oh, sure uh, let's. So, uh, somebody was asking about what if the hacked buildings had like building blocks and you can build defenses. So, um, one of the things, one of the themes with the game is that it's it's you versus the world. You know, it's like you're this like hacker that's just trying to use you know the corporation's technology against them, and they're the big evil people, and you're the you're the lone you know the lone person fighting back. Um, but so so I'm probably not going to have you like defend a corporation or use any like build things, but I will have you. Um, I have thought about maybe corporations spawn their own defenses that become, you know, things that you have to watch out for in the hack area, that sort of thing. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, I have a lot of different ideas for, like, corporation variations. Um, and I haven't mentioned this, there's going to be, like, a whole quest system, too. So, like, go hack this one because of this. Like, go and take this data to that corporation um, because it's a totally a Trojan that's going to break in. You know, that sort of thing. Um, just for people who like story, that there needs to be story, you know? Story's a good thing to have, I, I must say. I mean, it, it, it brings me into the world a little bit more. That's the goal. I, I like story. I don't have to have story. I mean, fuck, I've spent I don't know how much time on The Binding of Isaac, which has very little story. Um, it does have some, though, you know? Yeah, like yeah of course it does. Yeah. And, you know, I want to put, like, fake advertisements throughout the city, that sort of thing. Um, Have you played the Claptastic Voyage DLC? No, I haven't played that one. Hey, you got a perk, by the way. Um, not a talent, but a perk. 
All right, you you should play Borderlands the pre-sequels Claptastic Voyage DLC. Okay. And you were talking about putting up advertisements in the game. They a lot of these things you've mentioned, mm-hmm. Borderlands the pre-sequels actually done with that DLC, which is awesome to me. Like I nice. I I loved it. So I think it's an amazing thing. But there's there's pop-up ads where uh, you'll be walking across the ground and all of a sudden a pop-up ad pops up at your feet and mm-hmm. you can't move forward you, ha- you have to walk around it but if you if you you know push your action button on it you can actually buy the ammo from it or whatever or buy health or grenades it's really dumb and really funny eventually it gets annoying but it's really fun <laughs> so the um, the jumping enemies in my game are called pop-ups nice okay that that's definitely <laughs> good use of the words you win, sir. You win. Uh, thank you. All of the, the perks are very punny, too. Like, I, I crowdsource on Twitter to uh, to find out, to, to get better puns. Um, so this, the perk that you got where things pierce through things, it's hard to see in action because it still spawns sparks on everything. So it kind of looks like it's not piercing through everything, but it does actually pierce through everything. Um, it, it's great for killing multiple targets. Um, and it's also really good if you put points in the weapon range. Um, there are some talents which seem terrible unless you figure out that, oh, look, there's a build that I could really use, for instance, weapon range, which is almost useless for other builds. So I like to I like build diversity. That's one of my, my major design goals. I, are, are you ever planning on bringing this to consoles? I, I, uh, I think it'd be kind of hard, but would you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the game's got full controller support already, so it's practically ready for consoles. The big issue is getting um, split screen, because the game is not built for split screen, but I'm going to attempt that. I can't promise anything. Um, But yeah, no, I've already talked to Microsoft and Sony, um, Mm. and I formed a corporation recently, um, which is kind of funny from a game that's about breaking into corporations. Um, But yeah, formed a corporation recently, super duper game company. and uh, that'll that'll be proceeding soon. Nice. To get started, like I mean, obviously, getting on a console is going to take a while because I probably have to actually finish the game and then put it on consoles. But you're but, not you're not planning on finishing the game, though. No, I am. But I'm probably <laughs> also going to continue adding things afterwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on consoles, aren't aren't you going to have to wait to put that out in basically what is a DLC format? I doubt it, because people do patches on consoles all the time, so I don't need to do DLC, and actually I don't like paid DLC, I prefer freed up- Oh, I'm not talking about paid DLC, no, fuck that. I mean, the only paid DLC the game has right now is the soundtrack, and that's because um, the the guy who made the soundtrack owns the rights to that, so he gets the money from the soundtrack sales. Shovel Knight. Do you like Shovel Knight? You know, I do like Shovel Knight, I, I don't play it though, because I am- not a platformer guy. I'm very, very bad at platformers. Um, Free DLC just came out for that. Cool. A whole new campaign that adds like three or four more hours of gameplay where you play as Plague Knight. And it is a complete different gameplay experience. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to tell you that you need to check that out. Maybe, maybe you'll enjoy it as Plague Knight. But you'll have to beat the game of Shovel Knight first. That's no, I can't. I can't do that. Oh, but I tried. Um, you can do it. Come on, oh, you can. You can do it, man. Oh, you got this. I, I don't have the time. You, you want me to finish Black Ice, right? Like, Jesus. Uh, okay, you make a good point there. But <laughs> I mean, you guys, seriously, if I get into the Overwatch beta, Black Ice is canceled. Like, we're doomed. Oh no. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited for that game. Overwatch. That was the uh, big booth at PAX East, right? Did you get to play it? It was so good. I, I had no interest in it, really. Uh, oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm not shitting on it by any means. It looks fun. I, I just don't have the interest in it. Uh, you know, it's. It reminded me a lot of um, Gotham City Imposters, and I just sat there and thought, well, I could just play Gotham City Imposters. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I had that thought about Destiny original, originally I mean, with uh, Borderlands and shit, so... You could play <coughs> any other, you know, real-time strategy game, but StarCraft is the best one because Blizzard, you know, puts a shit ton of polish into everything, right? So... Uh, yeah, I guess, in a way. Or, I, I don't know, 
I, I'll, I'll stick to one of something usually is my my problem like uh i i had diablo 3 and i i, I played diablo 3 quite a bit and then i was like well torchlight 2 is just better in every way so i i decided to stick with torchlight 2 instead i uh borderlands so far i've stuck with borderlands now i'm interested in destiny but <laughs> destiny tried to do the whole borderlands thing and you know it's not exactly easy to pull off because well I, I you know i think i disagree with that destiny tried to go for a borderlands thing yes it is a first person shooter with rpg mechanics but they're really going for more of an mmo setup oh, God. than anything else um so it it's it's way different and it's gonna feel different and you're gonna have to grind for loot and that sort of thing and we're you know in borderlands the loot is much more randomized and it's an action rpg it's closer to what i'm going for mm. the, okay 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 i'm with you i'm with you i'm sorry you're right i i feel like you just made a really good point that i had not really thought about previously i'll accept this you win just like I'm gonna win that jack o' lantern contest. Yes. In your dreams, big boy. I'm, I'm wait, wait, wait. I'm dreaming. Oh, he's hacking level fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I just, okay. I it was a mistake. <laughs> so, oh. when it comes to the events, you, you've you've programmed events for different dates and everything. Now, yes. are these only holidays, or are there secret things in there that? Currently, yes. So now there's there's July Fourth, Christmas, Halloween. Um, uh, one the first year uh, that I had this, and this was before I was on Steam or anything. I did put um, birthday hats on all of the spiders on my birthday, um, but that was too difficult to leave in, so I uh, I did not leave that in. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Birthday hats on the monster sounds like a pretty damn good thing. I, I, I think that what you need is uh, Cinco de Mayo. You, ne you need luchadors. <clears throat> just, just you know, luchadors. I don't, I don't know how I can fit that into the game, but like, I, hmm. yeah, I don't know. Tron, the, so the disc weapon turns into a something right? <laughs> ah, God. Yeah, oh, well, that, that works. That works. Oh man, I, I, I love mariachis, so that works for me. Um, <laughs> but what's better, though, is Luchadors. <laughs> I mean, that's always the answer. Luchadors is the answer. There's no other answer for anything, ever. See? No disagreements. <laughs> I win, everybody. <laughs> oh, yep, there you go. Expect Luchadors. <laughs> by, by unanimous vote. <laughs> oh. All right, well... Anyways, I think I'm gonna get ready to wrap this up. Um, it's wow. Okay, yeah, it's already been over an hour, so yeah. I, I think one of the things that I, I want to finish up with, and it's the thing that I usually like to finish up with. There's so many people that are afraid to get into making games, and you're somebody who's basically just starting out. What are what are your words of wisdom to those people that are thinking about it, but they're too afraid to jump in? So, the biggest thing is, other than, you know, make a game, like, that's, that's, you, you have to do that. But the biggest thing, other than that, is don't compare your work to anyone else besides you. Because you don't know how long they've spent on their game or how many years of experience they've had. And, you know, you are always improving. And it, the only valid comparison, and the only comparison that will keep you happy, is when you compare it to your previous work. So nice, nicely spoken, sir. Congratulations! That that might have been the best one yet. <laughs> Thank you. And and there's there's been some twenty minute explanations from some developers. Uh, Edmund McMillan gave like a a good twenty minute long explanation on why you just shouldn't. <laughs> It just shouldn't be. I mean, there's there's a lot of downsides to game development, but you know, there's a lot of upsides too. Like, and and really, if you think about it, you're making people happy. Like, that's that's your whole goal. Like, what? Why would that not be fun? My my thought on the whole situation is is just going to go into a, another podcast all alone. 
uh, in coming up soon. I, I'm I'm just on this fucking rant against PR and marketing firms right now and the way they screw over people. So basically, don't don't get involved with people that screw you over. That's 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 my words of wisdom. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep, that's that's a good idea. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so where where can people find Black Eyes? Where where can people find you? Where can people check out anything and everything they are interested in from you. Okay, well, um, I'll, let me drop some links here. So, Black Ice uh, and and everything. Really, this is the only game that I have right now. But I mean, so it owns superdupergc.com right now, um, which is my website. Um, and it will also be the website for Super Duper Game Company, so whatever else we do. Um, we being my wife and I. Um, and uh, Black Ice is also on Steam, so let me just, that's not my link, that's somebody else's link, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's on Steam, it's on the Humble Store, it's on Itch.io, and it is on Indie Game Stand. Um, those are the only places you can get it right now. If you get it from somewhere else, um, I'm not getting any money from that, so don't. Um. <laughs> Pay the developers, quit stealing shit, people. Yeah, I'd love to be able to do this full time, but it is, I'm not capable of doing that right now. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll I, see how that goes. That that's the thing that drives me nuts is when people start stealing shit and not realizing how badly it affects people. Like I, at a triple A level, it's not as bad. It's still bad. It's not as bad though. In, in this case, you're 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 fucking with a person and right. their livelihood, and it's just like, the fuck are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I get. I get that some people in, you know, like other countries can't can't spend as much money on games, but that's why on Steam there's pricing that's lower for other countries, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, the game is, um, somebody's asking in chat, the game is $15 right now. It will be $20 later. Um, I, I don't do big sales. Like the game might go, I don't know, 15% off sometimes, but you know, it's, Really, I want people to be happy with the game now, and just, that's why it's not full price from the start. Uh, that seems like a pretty fucking smart idea. I don't know, I, I there's been some people that have tried to, uh, tried to do it the opposite way, which is start at a higher price and then lower it down And when the game's actually released. That way it keeps the people that want to play it and help out invested in it instead and the other people that just want to buy it to buy it and not help out it keeps them I, out yeah i kind of get that and you know there's the whole like sunk cost thing where people will defend and put more time into games that they've spent more money on because they feel like they need to get their money's worth but mm -hmm. like that that seems exploitative to me I, i'm i'm i've started to uh see it that way myself as well uh it was something I did agree with at a certain point in time, and then I started seeing the way that that actually worked out and how much it just pissed people off more and, and turned people away from said game. It was just like, all right, you know what? I thought I saw it from the developer point of view, and uh, it turns out, no, nah, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Like, you kind of get where they're coming from, but it's just not a fantastic idea. Um, but yeah, I try to be super open with my development. I stream my development on Twitch sometimes. So if you guys in chat just, you know, click my name, it'll take you to my take you to my page and you can follow me and I'll stream development every Monday. I do, although not next Monday, because I'm going to be at a party. Um, I do a multiplayer Monday where we all just get together and play the game together, whatever the new build is, and just have fun with it. So I will be there. Yeah, yeah awesome. I don't I don't know if anybody if I mentioned this before, the game does have 10 player multiplayer, which is PvP and co-op. Or PvP, yeah, PvP or co-op. Um, so if you're into multiplayer, this game has it and it works great. And you don't have to do port forwarding and you can play with people in Japan if you want. Like it's 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 good stuff. Excellent. And, and somewhat recently, you can actually drop items and give them to other people. Oh, oh that's good. That's good shit. You know, maybe maybe I'll check out the PvP or the PvE and and everything with other players. I I, I think that a little bit of multiplayer and a, a loot based game is just really good. Yeah, it's more fun to go and play with friends. 
sides, right? Like, you know, yes. some guys got the minion build, the other guys got the sniper build. You know, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, God, there's one more thing. Um, oh, there's no character model in multiplayer yet, so don't be surprised when you see that everybody looks like a pill. Hey, you found the shark. Okay. I don't like the shark. So. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the shark is the one boss in the game, and he is very deadly, and he is not intended to be taken on until way higher levels. So, you're probably gonna die. Yeah, I was hoping I could cheese it, but no. Yeah, it's possible to cheese him if you're lucky, but yeah, he's got missiles, and he predicts where you go. Yeah, he, he'll lead his targets and whatnot. <laughs> so... Uh, Basically, you just figured out a really good way to end off the interview. Fight that shark! He did, he just died. Yeah. <laughs> you can try hacking finality directly, the, the end of the game there. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> Let's go for it. God mode. Hashtag God mode. Backslash something. There, there is, in fact, a God mode cheat, um, which you can turn oh. on if you're terrible at games. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want to see you die. It's the uh, code from from Blood, or <laughs> that turns you into a dog. It's actually dog mode. Oh man, I, I'd love to do a dog mode, but then I don't know how you would. I need melee weapons for that. I don't have that yet, but um, man. So there's been so much kappa in this, in this <laughs> chat so far, but so I had at one point. I had a Kappa, if, by the way, if you shoot the shark, he's going to see you. Like, I mean, yes, he's got a range on him, but if you shoot him, he will definitely come at you. Okay, so there is no stay out of his range then? There's no out of his range. Like, you can, like, the only way to really cheese him is get him stuck on a building and have him hit. Whoa, did he just go sideways? That was cool. He's not supposed to do that, but I like it. Um, uh, so I had on, so I talked to the guy whose face it is for to Kappa, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, hey, can I use your face, your Kappa, for uh, for emoticons for Steam for my game? And he was like, yeah, go for it, man. Uh, and that was great, and I had a Kappa emoticon on Steam, uh, and then Twitch was like, oh, dude, we totally own that copyright, so mm. you're gonna have to quit that. So I did. Um, there was just some copyright confusion in there, but now there is an emoticon that replaced that, which is a new picture of the same guy. Nice. Making basically the same face. Um, and it's called Lazy Thunk because that's what he goes by. And uh, if you're into Kappa, you might like Lazy Thunk. It's the only Kappa style emoticon on Steam, as far as I know. It's pretty damn good, though. It's pretty damn good. All right, well, I'm going to end this. Everybody, you can check out everything over at spiderduck.net for whatever else is going on over there. There's new podcast fuck like three times a day or a week no, three times a day my god hey that would be insane uh, three times a week there's a new interview every friday uh i can officially announce dave lang from iron galaxy studios will be the first week of october